We had giant gun reform rallies sweep the country over the weekend. Take a look at this. March for Our Lives draws bigger crowd than Trump inauguration, organizers say. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Uh, so they say there were about 800,000 people in D.C. alone. I mean, the pictures coming out of this thing are just absolutely mind-boggling. Um, and it's not just in D.C. I mean, these marches were happening all over the country. In, in so many big cities across the country. And I want to go ahead and show you one of the speeches from Parkland student David Hogg. The cold grasp of corruption shackles the District of Columbia. The winter is over. Change is here. The sun shines on a new day, and the day is ours. For the fir first time, voters show up 18% of the time in midterm elections. Not anymore. Now, who here is going to vote in the 2018 election? If you listen real close, you can hear the people in power shaking. They've gotten used to being protective of their position, chewing safety, the safety of inaction. Inaction is no longer safe. And to that we say, no more. 96 people, 96 people die every day from guns in our country, yet most representatives have no public stance on guns. And to that, we say no more. We are going to make this the voting issue. We are going to make, take this to every election, to every state and every city. We are going to make sure the best people get in our elections to run, not as politicians, but as Americans. Because this, this is not cutting it. When people try to suppress your vote, and there are people who stand against you because you are too young, we say no more. When politicians say that your voice doesn't matter because the NRA owns them, we say no more. When politicians send their thoughts and prayers with no action, we say no more. And to those politicians supported by the NRA that allow the continued slaughter of our children and our future, I say get your resumes ready. You know, I'm still in awe of just how good these Parkland students are in the spotlight because they didn't ask for this. They were just thrown into it because there was a just disgusting, disastrous, tragic massacre at their school where they saw their friends get killed. And this is the, the first time that the students in one of these uh, circumstances just basically stood up and said, listen, we're not, we're not going to take this anymore. We're going to use our platform because, you know, the eyes of the country and the world were on us after what happened at Parkland. So we're going to tell you that uh, we're not okay with this. This has become the status quo, and we're going to try and change it. And, I mean, they've just been so effective to this point. They've made it so that, for example, there was kind of a half-measure gun reform bill that already passed in Florida. Now, again, it's a half measure, and there's decent parts of the bill, but there's also really shitty parts of the bill. So, you know, it. the net effect is yet to be seen. But the fact that they basically are scaring the politicians in Florida to take action, the, even Donald Trump has decided, okay, we're going to take some action, not that much, but do something in terms of bump stocks. So, I mean, this is... This is what happens when you have just a, a giant tsunami of people saying, hey man, fuck off, we're going to change this, this is not okay. And imagine if it were your kid inside one of these schools, and these shootings seem to happen like every month. But imagine if it's, you know, your kid, or your mom, or your dad at the supermarket or wherever, and then somebody comes in and they, they shoot everybody up and then they die. Then you would understand, hey, yeah, maybe there's something we can do about this issue. Now, the other aspect of them that I love is that they're not, it's not absolutist thinking. Because when you talk to them, the overwhelming majority of them are like, I don't want to ban guns. That's not what I'm asking for. And in fact, David Hogg in particular, he was interviewed on Fox News. 
And he said, I'm not against the Second Amendment. So I'm not against it. So in other words, this isn't a black or white issue. It's nuanced and there are shades of gray. But what we know for sure is the status quo ain't cutting it. So that means we have to take some sort of action, whether it's universal background checks and what they're asking for is that. They're asking for a ban on assault weapons. I think we should do a, a ban on high capacity magazines. I think we can treat guns more like we treat cars and have, you know, a test and a process you go through and regular uh, mental health checks. I mean, there are more regulations on things that are, you know, much, <laughs> much more innocuous than guns. I mean, you can't go into the store and get, uh, you know, multiple different kinds of cough medicine along with some other regular things at the pharmacy because those are the ingredients where if you buy them at once, ooh, you might be making some kind of a drug like crystal meth or something. So they have rules. Nope, you can't buy that. So there's more regulation on cough medicine than there are on guns? And then we have the numbers that we have. I mean, he said 96 people a day die from guns. I, I, Again, when you talk about other developed countries, that's the number they get for the entire year. So don't say there's nothing that can be done. We know what happens when you look at the macro statistics. It's simply propaganda from the NRA when they say, oh no, if you do gun reform, it doesn't change anything and you're taking away the rights of law-abiding citizens. Well, no, you're not talking about taking away the rights of law-abiding citizens because we already established we're not against the Second Amendment. We're just in favor of regulation. And we also know when you look at the statistics from other countries, when they have gun reform, they have fewer gun deaths. So they have a theory. The NRA theory is more guns equals more peace. That's factually incorrect. And we've covered the Harvard study on this repeatedly. You know, they've uh, come out and said where there are more guns. This is the conclusion of a meta-analysis on this issue where they looked at all the, the, the science and they said where there are more guns, there is more gun violence. So, and I love the way that they frame it because David Hogg was saying this is all about corruption. You know, we're going to get out there and vote, so watch out. The NRA owns these politicians. And enough with your thoughts and prayers. That is, I mean, that is, that's a young person's reaction, but it's an accurate reaction. You never have anybody in the silent generation. You never have any baby boomers. I mean, to them, that's heresy. <gasps> oh, you've broken decorum and you're being impolite because you told me you're not in favor of thoughts and prayers. Stop and think why they're not in favor of your thoughts and prayers because they don't do anything. It's an argument for inaction. It's a way of saying, I'm not going to do dick about this, but I want you to think I'm, I care about it by tossing around this platitude, this cliche, thoughts and prayers, fuck your thoughts and prayers. It's not doing anything, it's not changing anything, and it's a lazy excuse to not take action. It's a way to try to obfuscate and deflect and say, no, 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 I care about this, but I mean, I'm, my heart's in the right place, but I'm not going to do anything. I mean, come on, really? You want me to do something to maybe prevent the next one? No, why can't I just say something that's meaningless that makes you think I care even though I don't care. That's why they're against it. And this generation is correct to be against it because they're tired of the bullshit and they see the corruption. Again, that's not so the older generations, all due respect to the people in those generations who are, are know what's going on here, but that's not a way that they would be comfortable with framing it. You know, you l see it on corporate media, mainstream media, people from the older generations who are like, the distinguished gentleman from across the aisle, as, as if we're having an actual conversation, a real discussion or debate between competing ideologies and philosophies. We're not having that. That's not really happening. It's not like they're, oh, two p uh, people who are principled, who have their position because of genuinely, they genuinely thought it out. No, you have people who are, uh, you know, beholden to the gun manufacturers who are using any excuse imaginable to try to cling on to continue to take that uh, money from the gun manufacturers and to not change anything. So... Uh, I love what they're doing here. I get it. By the way, yes, okay, it's fair to say sometimes they get a little goofy, you know, because they're young. They're young. They're fucking high school students. What do you expect? What do you expect? You think you would be able to do any better in high school? Would you not be able to seem like a little goofy and weird? And like the David Hogg serious face is always like, reel it in. <laughs> he makes this face like, I'm going to be serious. Okay, David, we get it, man. We see. We see. You could just talk and not make a face. So, I, I, I don't want to be too hard on them, and my point is you shouldn't be too hard on them either. They're in high school, and they were thrust in the spotlight. So sometimes they might, you know, seem like they're kids, because they are kids, and that's why they shouldn't, I mean, nobody should see their friends get gunned down, and then lawmakers 
sit around with their thumbs up their asses. So I definitely support what they're doing. And listen, we said it when this shooting happened, and they, then they came out in the spotlight. This one feels a little different, doesn't it? And it's because the spotlight is on them, and they're doing something about it, which is really noble and courageous. And again, don't be one of those people who, uh, l in a lazy way, strawmans them and acts like they're in favor of banning guns. That's not true. That's not true. The, virtually all of them have said they're not in favor of banning guns. So, you know, this is why it's a movement that's for real change, and you have hundreds of thousands of people all around the country who were just flooding the streets to, to have their voices heard. And this is yet another way where you see the, the disconnection between what the people want and what our politicians are doing. I mean, it's so obvious now when you see, like, look at these rallies, man. It's just so wild. And you could get a rally like this on any issue. You know, the Fight for 15, there were giant protests about that recently. You could do the same thing for Medicare for All, have giant rallies over it. So the people are solidly on one side, and then the politicians are doing anything but the right policies. So, don't stop. Don't stop. And then, by the way, to the Democrats, because this is... There's the potential for a, a worst-case scenario here, which is, on issues like this, the Democrats get in in a landslide, but then they do nothing. And listen, I'm telling you that because it's not like they never had, uh, you know, a supermajority in recent history. They did. Barack Obama had a supermajority. What did he do on the issue of guns? <laughs> so this is, and this is why, you know, you have to demand your, the politicians you vote for do your bidding. You can't just sit back and say, well, we know these other guys are bad, therefore, by default, I'll vote for... The Democrat and then everything will work out. No, it doesn't work out unless you say to the Democrat also, hey, bitch, I'm going to force you to do the right thing, too. Don't think this is just only a backlash vote and then I, you do whatever the fuck you want to do. Because they're always going to have their excuses. The Democrats will get in and, well, you know, the sun was in my eyes and the Republicans were fighting really hard and we couldn't do it because it was on Wednesday at 8.30 and we thought that if it was going to get done, it'd get done by Tuesday and then that's why, at the end of the day, sorry, we couldn't really do anything for guns, but here's another piece of Wall Street deregulation where we agree with the Republicans. Fuck off! Do the right thing or we vote you out too. So this can't be simply rigidly partisan. You have to force the Democrats to do the right thing because if you just... Give them leeway, they won't do the right thing as they've proven time and time again.